Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today I've got a tip for you on how to skip a jig or just any bait in general. Uh, frequently I have people in my boat who tell me, you know, how impressed they are with my ability to skip baits into tight spots. Five two pounders, everything else is three pounds and a little. It's not something that's as difficult as people think it is. Uh, I mean, the number one, the number one thing you can do to improve your your skipping ability is practice at it. Uh, I can tell you, you know, I grew up river fishing, and with that comes a lot of timber and kind of tight quarter type fishing where you're you're just trying to place your bait into really specific spots because the current's pushing uh you know the current's creating tiny little eddies and things like that so it's something i've grown up doing so i feel very comfortable doing it but it doesn't need to be that difficult and and there's a couple of key components uh to doing it you can't just pick up any rod and any bait and make it work uh, so you really just want to make sure that you're using the correct equipment if you are going to be trying to skip your bait. So the first thing I want to point out is your bait choice. Uh, this is just a dirty jig swim jig with a Berkley deal on the back. It's a very nice compact bait. Uh, it's heavy. It's also got a weed guard. Anything that's weedless helps you skip a bait into certain areas. It gives you that confidence to know that you're going to get your bait back. So that is important. But more than anything, you want a bait that's compact, has decent amount of surface area, but doesn't have a ton of appendages. You know, if you try to skip a, a crankbait, it's harder to do because you've got hooks hanging off of it and the hooks will catch on the water as you're skipping it along. Uh, same thing with like a spinnerbait. If you try to skip a spinnerbait, you've got the appendages kind of hanging off to the side. You've got blades, you might have trailers. It just, it's, it's tougher to do. You want a more compact, bait if you can do that i mean there's times you need to be throwing a certain bait and you have to deal with it but ideally a compact bait that's got some decent weight to it is important you know i know when you're fishing heavy condition or heavy cover you want to be throwing heavy line but it's easier to skip your bait with light lighter pound test line you know i usually will, will skip with a 15 pound uh and I'm comfortable with 15 pound, 100% fluorocarbon because I know that I can get fish out of most of the, uh, most of the thickest of cover that I'm throwing into. You know, so I don't know that you want to go down to like six, eight or 10 pound, but 15 pound skips a heck of a lot better than 20 or 25 pound test. So that's something you want to keep in mind. When it comes to rod selection, you want at least a medium heavy action rod that has a faster action speed to it. If you've got a slower speed where your rod loads up more, you get more of that parabolic bend down here. When you go to cast, your rod loads up and it's harder to control where you're gonna, you're gonna cast that bait. And frequently, when you're trying to skip your bait into areas, you've got a, like a little hole like that that you're trying to put your bait through. It's easier to control it with a faster action rod. Um, with respect to rod length, if you're standing, you know, off of shore, it's, it's, it's a different skip position than if you're standing, say, in a boat or if you're in a walleye boat. Ideally, you want to be closer to the water level as possible. You know, there's not times you necessarily can always do that. But when you cast, you're going to want to bring your bait basically at surface level. You know, I like to compare it to skipping stones. When you skip stones, you don't necessarily throw overhand like a football. You want to come sidearm and like get as close to the water as you can because you want the momentum for that rock to hit and just continue to skip it's the same thing with your bait the higher up that you're coming with your bait the higher the direction that your bait's coming from the more it's going to puncture into the water versus skipping off the water and continuing on so you want to make sure when you go through your casting motions that you're actually uh almost coming sidearmed you know you're, you're coming 
with your rod as close to the water level as, as possible. From a reel perspective, you just want something that's a higher end reel that's got much better speed control. In order to skip, a lot of times you're gonna be skipping with the spool tension loosened or completely off. And if you've got a uh, lower line reel, oftentimes that'll result in backlashes versus it allow, you know, the reel having a much better control system that will kind of slow the spool as it's coming off and prevent those backlashes. So in order to skip, you kind of need the whole setup. You know, if you have the right bait, the right rod and a bad reel, it's not going to work as well. If you've got the right reel, a bad rod and a bad bait, again, you're not going to skip as well. So you want to be aware of the, the actual tools that you're using. The, the other thing I want to point out, yeah, a good way to practice your skipping is to think of it as like when you're flipping. I think most people are better at skipping their bait when they're flipping and that comes that comes with the motion again. The rod tip is down closer to the water and when you, you flip it, it's it's you're basically just trying to keep that bait riding right on the water. So when you do that, you're actually rising your rod tip at the same time, almost like you know, you're visualizing where that bait's hitting the water and you're slowly rising that bait so that you're, you know, you're rising the rod to keep tension on the line to keep the bait wanting to rise right above the surface of the water. And if you've got, you know, enough momentum behind it, the bait will skip with that tension you're putting on the line. So those are all key things to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing, you know, so when you're casting, instead of flipping, the other thing to keep in mind is you want that same uh, rod action. You know, you want to you want to continue to try to control that bait. So when you you come at it from a sidearm perspective, like that, you want to keep your rod. You want to like keep rising your rod up, which will keep that tension on the line. So it's always better to come from the side or to come almost parallel to the water level versus any other cast. And you dragging it. So. You know, the, the biggest takeaway from all of this though, you want the right equipment, you wanna know the direction of the rod, but you gotta go out and do it. You have to be willing to go out and say, I'm gonna practice, I'm gonna get stuck, but it's gonna be worth it. Because when I get this down, when tournament time comes, I'm gonna be able to make the right cast, put it exactly where I want to, and catch that five or six pound bass that's living in a spot that nobody else has gotten their bait to. I mean, it's such an important key for tournament fishing. And I can't tell you how many times I feel like I've gone behind other guys, but because I was able to make the cast that those guys weren't able to make, I'm able to get that one or two extra bites per day. And that's a huge thing. So guys, go out, try it. I know you can do it. It's not as hard as it looks and you'll be rewarded for it.